And um, so Orontes um, is now placed in Armenia, and he's Orontes the Bactrian. And um, Herod Strabo, I think Strabo says that Orontes was Ar Ardashir's son, and he was the satrap of Sophine and Matien, mm -hmm. which is another word of Mitanni. Mitanni so yeah. here we have this name uh, appearing long time after actual, you know, the existence of Mitanni. So that was interesting that it comes up as a name. Wow. And um, but but it's a very interesting. So I mean, we we always think that, you know, Orontes, you know, we're really proud of him. But he has such an interesting story. He's, he's full of intrigues. It's like a soap opera. So first of all, he marries um, King Arda Ardaxerxes the second mm -hmm. daughter, Rodoguni. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he is um, satrap of Armenia. And when uh, Xenophon comes through Armenia, he mentions that there is a certain Orontes who's a satrap of Armenia, and that's also how we know about him. And he was a de facto enemy of uh, Xenophon and the 10,000 Spartans that went to fight against Ardaxerxes II. Yeah. But Orontes, of course, was his satrap. So, But he still allowed the 10,000 Greeks to go through Armenia more or less unhindered. Because we'll, we're also going to see this in history. Most armies that really didn't have a fight with Armenia proper, they were given safe passage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we, 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 uh, I mean, we've seen this so many times going through all yeah. the, was, especially the dynasties we've been covering lately. Yeah. We see this a lot of throughout the different kingdoms of allowing passage through yeah, occupied, from, from Romans to, uh, you know, um, whatever, you know, the big powers that used to fight, we were obviously stuck in the middle. Yeah, so we were, there's we always, were, we were either a strategic, um, buffer zone or some sort of you know I'm, I'm i'm curious though were they were there we haven't discussed any of this within detail but like i'm curious if there was some sort of deals and things like that that were struck that would allow these passages to to occur right I mean, yeah. you're having an army of let's say 10 20 000 troops legions whatever you want to call them pass through or and use their lands maybe even some of our resources Right. obviously they had to make stops oh, yeah, absolutely. right absolutely so absolutely uh, i mean there's stories about like you know as far as uh the hospitality of the armenians yeah. Yeah, especially in towards Kilikia. the especially towards in the, Kilikia. yeah the, the soldiers yeah. Yeah. especially in Kilikia. well i mean xenophon wrote a, he, a whole book about it uh, called the anabasis and it's like his whole journey and he talks about certain tribes and you know um, certain politics and diplomacies that were going on, a lot of uh, treachery, and but, but more or less, you know, his whole army crossed Armenia without any large incidents. I mean, there were some skirmishes here yeah. and there. Yeah. And, and it wasn't only Orontes. There was this guy called Tiribazus. He was also a satrap of Armenia. So this is where we're heading. So Orontes was quite smart. He was quite cunning. Because now in, in history... He's known for his treachery, right? But I'm thinking, why did he do that? So this is his uh, story. Okay. So Tiribazus and Orontes, mm -hmm. they were dispatched by um, um, Ardaxerxes, their king, to go to Cyprus, mm -hmm. my birthplace. Back then, there was a certain king, Evagoras. You know, he was a king of Salamis of Cyprus. And so he kind of raised his head and said, I want to be independent. I don't need the uh, Achaemenid, uh, you know, rulers on, mm -hmm. on my head. And so he kind of uh, started rebellion, which also included Kilikia and Phoenicia. And, and so Ardaxerxes said, okay, Orontes, Tiribazus, go and Tegan Stetsur, you know, yeah. <laughs> to, to the yeah. place. <laughs> so they all go and uh, Tiribazus is um, uh, in charge of the navy and orontes of the army and all of a sudden orontes impeaches tiribasus like he lays a trap and he impeaches him and he gets him arrested and he sends him off back to um the court of ardaxerxes to be tried so, so the war is kind of wrapped up there's a you know agreement and then there's a trial and they acquit tiribasus and they they, they uh, hold Orontes responsible for his 
<laughs> Talk about a soap opera. How does that, wait, how does that work? Yeah. Hold on. And yeah, I mean, because.